go back and see we have our uh, learning sponsors and we'll see what that is. Keep Live Learning, Bella and David Adler, many of the Father of the Elder and Rose of the Coin, those who are inspired by Rebbe in America, Sirius Shapiro, Sarah Esther Marshall, Bob Nassim and Shaka, Gail and Leslie Kaplan and many of their parents, Mystic Sinsha, Bob Yosef, Karen Bakava, Kanan Ben Moshe, Yosef Akana, Tesha, Bob Shnei Yisra, the Lady of Shikola, Lisa Ben Yom, Moshe, Akoyim Bakana, the extra friends of the God of Kinnah, Richard Bad Mayer, Michael Klein, and Spencer Judah Klein, and David Sweet Ben Chaim, Marsha Brana, many of her husband, the Rabbi Yashmuel Ben Shmuel, friends and family of Vasa Ritholm, and Mordechai Yehuda Ben Barak Leib Cohen, friends and family of Sidney Bessler, Shlom Schlager Ben Dov, friends of Marvin Weinstein, Mordechai Ozer Ben Yisrael Elrom, Sarah Alpert, and many of her husband, her Rabbi Tzvi Ritzka Ben Ha'er, Rexford friends of Maddie Friedman, Mindel Miriam Bat Shalman Ruven, a month of learning by Susan and Ruben Podolsky, and many of her father, Simcha Brunin Ben Yeshua. A week of learning by Rabbi Bessler, and many of her mother in law, Rachel Bat Shalom, Rabbi Tzvi and Rabin Kartel, and many of his mother, Malka Bat Mordechai, and her mother, Chaya Eli Bat Menachem Zev. Um, today is the 25th, okay? But yesterday there was a day of learning by Milka, Gail and Milka Mailer memory of her mother-in-law, Minika Bad Yitzchak, as well as by Judy Jeremias, in memory of her father, Mordechai Ben Ariel. So there are no other individual days of learning today. So, Avrami, where did you leave off? That was a good place. Uh, I thought you were going to stop a little earlier, so yeah. I'm just going to go back to the very bottom. You get me on the roll, but Mem Vav Amud Beis says you get to the very bottom. Okay, just a quick review. The question being there whether or not this uh, grain, whether the Omer was active in a sense in terms of whether it aroused certain things and whether the was the beans to eat or not, or set kernels actually of grain. The point being that in their day, they took the kernels of grain and it could be used for either purpose of seeding to produce a new crop or as food. Okay, and that's part of the reason that we indicated, the Gemara wanted to clarify the status because if it was such that you considered the kernels used for seeding purposes, then it was absorbed into the ground, okay? And then <coughs> if it did not sprout again <coughs> or did not start growing, you had to wait for the next year's Omer to be able to uh, use them, right? So that was the point that the Gemara was trying to mention, okay? Finishing up there. Because it didn't uh, um, take root before the Omer. Right? And then on the top of Nun Zion, <coughs> sorry, okay, again, one, remove it and uh, what happens there. Is it like putting it into a jug or a pitcher? Right? And the Omer then permits it. O Dilma, but Linhu Agab Ara, take it. Right? So that's where you stop, right? Okay, so that's right. So now we're going to come back to this whole issue of Ona A, right? And dealing with the question of what happens if it's more than one sixth. Okay? So Gemara asks, Amar Rabba, says Rabba Amar Rabbasa, right? It says, <coughs> Sorry, by Rabbi Ami. So Rabbi Ami says, Ona'ah, ein lehem, bitu mekach yesh lehem. Oh, ein lehem. So the question is, what happens now regarding Ona'ah if the uh, financial situation was such that we saw that it was a sense of, uh, so to speak, if 
fraud and it was more than one sixth a month. Do we say then that ona'a applies and we simply have to pay, let's say that the, the, the uh, transaction goes through and you simply pay the extra money, pay that you extorted in a sense from the person? Or do we say no, that this we're going to claim is actually a situation of mekach ta'ud, okay? And therefore, the transaction is null and void whatsoever, okay? All right, and we're going to get the license, right? Okay. Right, so we, well, we're going to actually, the Gemara is going to actually go ahead and ask, why is it, okay, at some point that we again, Claim that these four items, one was the was hekdesh, one was land, one was servants, one right was was uh, documents of chol. Okay, so why is it? Well, how does that apply even in this situation as well? Okay, so what happens? Amar Rav Nachman says Rav Nachman. Also Hadar Amar Rav Pasha. So Rav Pasha came back and said, Sha Pashut. Right, it's obvious. Rabbi Ami, okay, but right, that Rabbi Ami explained it as follows again. That in those specific items, whether it was the karka, whether it was the avadim, whether it was the hekdesh, whether it was the certain starot, kov, things like that, there he's going to argue that ona'a for over one sixth is really going to be a mekach taud. Okay, situation. Continuing the Gemara goes on. Reb Yona Amar Ahekdesho. And regarding the question of something that has uh, consecration or sanctity, Rabbi Ami Amar Akarkaot. So Rabbi Yona holds that it applies to uh, hekdesh items. Rabbi Yemiya holds it applies to land. Ushavayu Nishmei the Rabbi Yochanan Amru. And both of them, again, saying regarding those items, cite Rabbi Yochanan as their source, okay, or as their primary view, ona'a em lahem bitu mekach yesh lahem. Right? That their ona'a... Well, it means, right, it means if there's no deal in that item, okay, in other words, the current deal is off. But if there's no uh, no claim for extortion or fraud in, on, uh, in those items, okay, we're going to see eventually what 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 well that's what the Gemara wants to ask. Manda Amar, so we see this difference between Rabbi Am, okay, Rabbi Yona and Rabbi Yirmiya. okay. Our Mishnah, remember, said there were four items, okay. If I remember correctly, okay. And now, okay, they both, however, say they're using Rabbi Yochanan as their basis for their source of their ruling. Manda Mara Hekde showed. So the one who said it was Hekde showed, which was Rabbi Yona, Kol Shekain Akarka Od. All the more so, it would also apply to land deals. Manda Mara Akarka Od. But the one who said it was on land deals, that was Rabbi Yona, about Ahekdeh Shot, lo. But he doesn't say it applies to consecrated items. Okay, that was Rabbi Yemiya, right? Okay, Kedish and why? Because he says it was like the view of Shmuel, the Amar Shmuel who says, Hekdesh Shavemena, if you have a consecrated item that's valued at, let's say, mana, a hundred, okay? And what did you do to de-sanctify it, okay? Shechililu al shavepuka, and you de-sanctified it on a coin of much lesser value. Michulal, it is considered de-sanctified, okay? So it doesn't, number one, it does not have to be on the coin, the value of the hectares, doesn't have to be desanctified on something of a similar value. And therefore, that's the implication is there is no ona'a in that situation. Okay? And that's... Right. 
okay, which is exactly a few, quite a bit over the six, which implies, therefore, okay, that the, all right? Okay, so now we're going to see in a, in a few minutes that we're going to cite something else, which is going to lead us to see that maybe there's a problem in what these guys said about from Rabbi Yochanan. In any case, it's not. We now have a bright Okay, and we're going to raise the question of Tzvan. Tzvan, how come it was taught there by a cave? I believe it's from Shmuel, all right? Okay, im haya kodesh balmum, if we have an animal, okay, and it's discovered, okay, by the, I'm going to suggest by the Kohen, that that animal that I brought as a sacrifice had a mum, where I have to exchange it for another animal. But let's say the value of my exchanged animal is not equivalent to the value of the original animal I had brought. What must I do? Okay, I must pay the difference, okay, in that amount of money. Okay, so that's what our Brita tells us. Yatsa lepulim, my original animal goes out, okay, to the... Uh, goes out to the pasture and becomes woolen with the other animals, right? And what must I do then? I with Sarich La Asot Lo Damim, I must calculate and pay the difference, okay, in the value of the two animals. Ama Rabbi Yochanan. So Rabbi Yochanan, however, says, Yatsalakulim, the Bar Torah. That the fact that I'm commanded to put my original animal out to pasture, okay, and it becomes unconsecrated. That's a Torah requirement, right? But the fact that I have to calculate and pay financial difference in the value of the animal, that's the Rabbanan, okay? So what does that tell us that Rabbi Yochanan holds? Okay, clearly it's a question, okay? So, but it would seem to imply that he would hold like Shmuel, that again, that you do not have to, that there's no ona, okay, on Hekdesh, clear. Okay, so Varesh Lakish, what does he say? Okay, so another issue. Okay, Amar, Af Tzarich Lasot Lo Damim Min HaTorah. Varesh Lakish agrees that the oraita, the animal has to be put out to pasture, but he disagrees on the question of whether it's the rabbanan or the oraita in terms of paying the difference in value, which would make us assume that therefore, Reish Lakish holds that there is ona'a in regards to hekdesh, okay? So let's go on now. Bamayaski, so what are we talking about? Ilema bekedai ona'a. If we're talking in regards to the whole issue of Ona'a, Baha Lema Resh Lakish, Shrikh La Lo Damim Devar Torah. Are we saying then that Resh Lakish holds that there is Ona'a then, and this would be requirement of the Torah mandated? Baha Tznan. But we have a Brighta that tells us, see, it's a Mishnah, okay, which is our Mishnah. These are the things that do not, are not subject, I'm going to say it that way, to ona'a, namely, hakarkaot, land, ba'avadim, and servants, ba'hashdarot, that we're talking about documents of oaths here, ba'hekdeshot, that clearly says that hekdesh does not, <coughs> is not subject to ona'a. Ela bitul mecca. But rather, according to this Ar Mishnah, it is subject to nullification of the uh, transaction whatsoever. One. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, that's what we're trying to clarify. Baha, Lema Rabbi Yochanan. In this case, what would let us say that Rabbi Yochanan holds? 
צריך לעשות לא דמים מדבריהם, מפני רבי יוחנן לבין. Okay, maybe we're going to wind up having to switch the stands between two of them. Shrich l'asot lo damim medivrayim. Right, you have to pay it based on the rabbi. V'amar Rabbi Yona, ahekter shon. But it was Rabbi Yona who said to us that it does apply to hekter. V'Rabbi Yirmiya, amar akarka o. And we saw earlier that Rabbi Yirmiya said it applied to lamb. Utzlavayhu mishmei the Rabbi Yona, and both of them in the name of Rabbi Yona. And Amre they say ona a ain lahem bitul mekar yesh lahem that ona a doesn't apply. Okay, but nullification of the of the transaction does apply. If he says exactly, he can't say if it's the Rabbanim, if he says that you've got to do it. Okay? You've got another note here. As a result, the view contradicts Rabbi Yochanan, the explanation of our Mishnah. That's the point. Okay? The Olam, the Bitum Mecca. So the Gemara suggests, what do we have to do? The Ipuch, the Rabbi Yochanan, the Reish Lakish. The Reish Lakish, the Rabbi Yochanan. So therefore, we have to change, suggest that no, we must change their perspective, their stance, and say, no, now it's Rabbi Yochanan that holds that it's the Oraita, and Rabbi Shlaki said it's got to hold to the Rabbani. Okay, going on. So what are we arguing about? Okay, we originally thought Rabbi Yochanan based his view on Shmuel's view. Okay? <coughs> Da Amar Shmuel, as we repeat for our benefit, right? What Shmuel said, Hekte Shavimane, Shechilelo Ashavimita, Mepulal, implying that there is no Ona'a in regards to Hekte. Okay? Ma Irega Shmuel. So therefore, we might have to argue that one of them does hold by Shmuel's view, right? And that would have to have been if we reverse. The original stands that would be Reish Lakish, right? Okay, eat Reish Shmuel. Okay, Umar lit Reish Shmuel, and that would now have to be Rabbi Yochanan's view. Okay. Now, however, the Gemara is going to say, "Hold on a second, guys. Let's not go that route." We buy it in. I, let's say I ask them a question: the following, Tikuli Alma eat Lahod Shmuel. Let's say no. Everybody holds the view of Shmuel, and therefore our question then comes: What are Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish arguing about? Right? Okay. So here, this is what they must be arguing about, namely Mar Savar Shechilelo and Lechatchila Lo. One may hold that ultimately, yes, there is desanctification. But initially, you shouldn't be able to do that. Okay? Uma savar shechila lo en lechatchila. Oh, I'm sorry. Uma savar afilu lechatchila. And the other holds no. Even additionally, you could do that desanctification. It's not in a sense of a de'eved desanctification. Okay? That's one view. Mara continues, however. Or maybe I might say the following. Maybe here we're talking in regards to the measure of Ona'a. Here we've been trying to argue the measurement in terms of it being greater than one-sixth. Okay, is that really the case here? Maybe we don't have to change the, the stand of Rabbi Yochanan and Reish and their argument is really in regards to the view of Rav Chista. Damar, who says, What do we mean when we say these items, particularly hekdesh, okay, has no, is not subject to this fraud? Okay, what do we mean there? Einan betorat ona'a that it's not within, I'm going to call it, the normal 
measure of onaha. Okay? All right? But rather, we're going to see, va'afilu pachot mikdei onaha chozer. Okay? That, exactly. Time. That we may be regard to Hekdesh, it's got a stricter standard. Okay? That's the case, right? And Rabbi Yochanan, right, would accept, okay, Rav Kista and Reish Lakish, perhaps not. We're going to see. Maybe them. But let's challenge it. <coughs> Excuse me, with the following. Ribi va'ona'a lehedrat. We have a a brighter that tells us that regarding interest, which we're going to get ultimately more into that topic eventually, probably in another parish, right? Ribi and Onaha, okay, apply to the common person. But it doesn't apply to the consecrated items of the base of Mikdash. What happens? Me. Alima mimatnitin. Do we say then that this brighter is, I'm going to use the word stronger than our Mishnah? The okimna betorat ona'a, that it seems to be establishing the requirement of, of uh, ona'a for hekdesh items. Hakanami, here too, ribi bedin ona'a lehedra. Here it seems to say that interest and the law of uh, exploitation, fraud, okay, apply to common person. But it doesn't apply either interest or to hekdesh. If that's the case, what about the fact that what's taught at the end of our mission? Where it says, Zechomer Behedyat Mi Behekdesh, that there's the stringency regarding a common person more than consecrated items. But we just got through saying earlier, right, Chaim, as you pointed out, that maybe the issue was that with regards to Hekdesh, there's a more stringent rule of Ona'a. So how can we have what happened? Okay. So the Gemara wants to deal with that. Aribi litne nami zechomer behegdesh. In regards to interest, let us teach then that there's a stringency regarding hekdesh rather than the common person, aona'a. Okay? Haki hashta. So where does that bring us now, so to speak? Bishlema. What? Right, litne nami, so let us teach then. So why doesn't our text teach us that there's a stringency in regarding to hekdesh compared to that of the common person regarding ona'a? That would then fall in line with what we had said, learned earlier that maybe with, with uh, I might be more strict. That would keep what we suggested earlier. So where does that apply now? That's acceptable where it tells us that there's a stringency regarding the common person for more than hekdesh. And no more. But what about the fact that we said that Hegdesh is thought to be more strict. There are other issues where Hegdesh is more stringent. Okay? Right? Vatula and no more. Okay? So let's go. Now, Ribi. Okay, what about Ribi? The Hegdesh. Hechidami. Since you mentioned the example of interest as well as Ona'a. Do we have a situation of interest in regards to Hekdesh? Okay, can we see any example? So Gemara is going to come present now a few possible examples of this. 
Hey, Kidanin, how is that possible? Okay? So the Gemara suggests, example one. Ilema de ospe gizbar mea bamana ve esrim. Gizbar mea, the mea ve esrim. I'm sorry, I didn't read that correctly. If we want to suggest that the temple treasurer loaned a hundred value, something with a hundred, and the person having to pay it back would have to pay a hundred. Twenty, okay. Vahaloma, isn't that a case? Vahaloma al hagizba, isn't that a case of the temple treasurer committing meila? Okay, misappropriation. I'll use that word for the moment. The kevan shema al hagizba, and once we say the gizba committed this uh, uh, misappropriation of temple items, yatsu me otav. We say that that money loses its sanctified status and becomes chulim, be sanctified, right? And what happens? Not only that, and it's like it becomes the the money of the person of the gizvar, and therefore he's no different than any other common person, where he's prohibited exactly time. He's prohibited from gaining any interest. Okay? That's the case. So that's one issue, but that doesn't seem to be a good enough example for the Gemara. So we'll try a second example where we might have an issue of interest. Amar Rav Oshaya, he suggests as follows. What are we talking about? Kagon shekibel alav lesafek Saltot me arba. Let's say that the gizbar accepted, okay, and was purchasing fine flour at a rate of such that it, uh, right, that it was at the four or seven, let's say. Okay, right? Va'amdu mishalot. But what happened? The price went up. And now the price is a three for a same amount. Okay? Kiditani, as was taught in the Brisa. Hamikabel alav the safek slat, the safek, I'm sorry, the safek slat tot me arba. One who arranged to acquire, okay, fine flour at a price of four, right? Va'amdu mishalosh, but it went up to three. The safek me arba. He pay, still pays the old rate. What? Right, to supply the base of metal. Right? Right. Well, we're going to get to that specifically when it says... Uh, no. He needs the flour for the base of Mikdash, for a mincha offering. Right? So what happens? Right? Misapek me arba. Mishalosh. Okay? Va'amdu me arba. Let's say what happens if he did the opposite. He arranged it. It was at, at the higher price, right? All right. And then the price dropped down to four, right? Misapek me arba. Then he acquires it at the lower price. Why? Because we always say shiyad hakodesh al ha'elyona. The temple treasury never loses money. Okay. Keep that in mind. Okay, all right. So now that could be again an example of maybe they would be making interest, right, on the change of the value of that flower. That would be the right, right, exactly. So what happened? Rav Papa Amar he says a different example. He suggests a third possible example. Hacha. We're dealing with, I'm going to call it, construction materials, okay, that have been given over to the treasurer, right? In Kiddush Shmuel. And we're going to hold like the view of Shmuel. The Amar Shmuel, because Shmuel says, how was that constructed? Bonin Bakol, 
Sheikh Tarikat Makadishi, that the Gizwa accepts the instruction materials in a non holy status. Once they are built and put into the base of Mikdash, that's when they become sanctified. Okay, okay so we finish that discussion. Okay. Now we go on to another part of our Mishnah. Ein Tvahen Tashlume Kesef. Our Mishnah said that these same four, uh, these same items mentioned at the outset of the Mishnah, land, slaves, hektesh, documents of Chov, right? They are not subject when stolen to be a double payment. Okay? And that's always of the principal, the Kerem. What happens? Right? How do we know this? The Tanu Rabbanon. Because we have a Brita that tells us as follows, based on the Pasuk itself. The Pasuk says, Al Kol Davar Pesha, okay, of any kind of, I'm going to use the word negligence here, right? Klal. That's a general statement. Okay? Then the Pasuk goes on. Al Shor, Al Hamor, Al Se, Al Chalma, listing specific items. What's that? That's the plot. That's the details. Okay. Then the pasuk continues. Al Kol Aveda Asher Yoma, all any lost object here, right? Which is stated. What happens? Kazav Klal. Then we come back to a generalization. Klal is plot is. One of the hermeneutic principles, generalization, with detail and generalization, e atadan elekein haprat. The result then is other things that are common to the detail can be included. What is the common motif of the detail? Mahaprat mefurash. Namely, once the detail is explained, davar hamikalkel the gufo mamon, that it is something that is transportable or movable and has intrinsic value. Akol davar hamikalkel the gufo mamon. So likewise, any other item that is transferable or movable, and it has intrinsic value. What? Right, in regard to the payment of double for theft, right? Okay, so what's excluded then from that parallel, from that detail? Yatsu Karkaot excludes land, Shainam the Taltalin, because it's not transfer, it's not movable. Yatsu Avadim, it excludes servants, right? Shahuk Shula Karkaot. Because they're associated with land. Yatsu Sharot, it excludes the documents of Hov. Why? Sha'afa Pishamikalkalin, because despite the fact that they are movable, transferable, Ain Gufan Mamon, the piece of paper doesn't have, okay, the document is for the, the acquisition of something and it's not have intrinsic value, it's just paper. Hekdeshot, what about that? Amarkra, there too, that's going to be excluded among those items first mentioned in our original mission. Why? Because the Pasuk says, Re'ehu, Re'ehu, if it applies to what's owned by your friend, the low Hekdesh, and not something that belongs to the temple treasury. So that would mean, I'm going to pause just for a second, that if something is stolen from the temple treasury, does the thief have to pay double? No. Okay, let's go on then. Our Mishnah then gave another criteria. Velo tashlume arba v'chamisha. What was that? That was when the thief stole the item and then he sold it or he slaughtered it, okay? Then he would have to pay four or five times according to the Pasuk. 
Right? Okay. My comma, what would be the, and by the way, that's four or five times the principal, the cash. Okay? My comma, what's the reason? Tashlume arba v'chamisha amar rachmanim. Because the Pasuk specifically spells out four or five times. Velo tashlume shlosha v'arba'ah. And not a payment of three or four times. Okay? Because if you remove the double payment for something stolen from the base of Mikdash, what do you have left? Okay? You only have the three or four times. Okay? Based on whether it was a, a sheep or whether it was an ox or something like that. Okay? Because our Pasuk said four or five times. Four for a sheep or cattle, five for an ox. Okay? So if we remove two from that, Okay, instead of four or five, what do we get? Two or three. Okay. Or three or four, that's what I meant. Okay, all right, let's go on. Now we get to the next part. Shomer chinam eno nishba. What about a person who is a, a uh, unpaid watchman or an unpaid bailey? Okay, and he makes a oath that the item was not Menahani Miri, what how do we know what's the basis for this one? Tanu Rabanan, we can cite in the Mishnah. I'm a bright I'm sorry. A Pasuk, he became Ish Ale Ehu when the person gives something to his neighbor. Well, that's the general thing. Namely now Kesef Okelim, okay, whether it's money or it's utensils, but that's the detail. The Gonev mi Beit Ha'ish that gets stolen, just to help us remember the Pasuk. Chazar uklal. Then it gets again another generalization. Klal uklal ki klal. Again, generalization, detail, generalization. Yet hadan ele ke'en haklal. Okay, we only make out a similar item regarding what's parallel to the detail. Ma haprat mifurash where the detail is spelled out. Again, it's something that's transferable and has intrinsic value. So likewise, any item that is movable and has intrinsic value. What happens? Again, excluding the land because it's not movable. Yatsu avadim shehukshu lekarkaot, excluding servants because they're associated with land. Yatsu sharot, excluding the documents. Sha'afa pisha metalkalim ein gufan mamon, though they're transmovable, they don't have intrinsic value. Hekdeshot amakra, there again, because of the hekdesh, we said it has to be regarding your friend. Okay, re'ehu velo shel hekdesh. That's your friend and not the going belonging to the temple base of Mikdash. I'll continue just a little bit more. No se sachar eno mishalem. We said the one that's the shomer sachar, shachir, or shomer sachar, one who's a paid watchman, right? What about him? Minahani miri. How do we know? Datanu rabbanan again a brighter. Once more, we cite the pasuk. He came isha re'ehu, which is a klal. That's the general. Chamor oshor ose for specific animals, but the detail. Vechol behema l'shmor, the animal to be watched or guarded. Chazar uklal. We come back to a generalization. Klal uklat uklal again, same format. Iyatadan eleke enaklat. We have then as a result what is the parallel to the spelled out detail. Mahaprat mefurash. Again, it has to be transferable or movable at intrinsic value. Again, we exclude land. Exclude servants associated with land. We exclude the documents. They're not of intrinsic value. 
hekdeshot of Matra Ve'ehu, Ve'ehu Velo Shel Hekdesh. And that's where we'll stop right there. Okay? Everybody have a